Right now we're going to put this animal into the bed here. This is one of the challenges of working with a bay is loading the animal. Um, commonly the animal in a freestanding pile can simply be um, pushed up into a bucket and then dumped onto the pile, um, which is challenging in this scenario. When you're pulling the animal onto the pile or you're otherwise putting the animal onto the pile with the bucket, you're going to want to make sure that you generally have about two feet between the edge of the animal and the edge of the pile. That space will allow for both the absorption of the odor by the material that gets cover covering the animal and will also make sure that the animal is adequately covered in order to get the microbial activity to obtain the temperatures that you're looking for. Now that we've got the animal on the pile and we've got a sufficient bed of wood chip and a moisture absorbing material uh, like the shavings beneath the animal, uh, we're going to prepare the carcass itself and we're going to start by uh, piercing the rumen and we'll actually also cut into the large muscles on the animal. C cutting into the large muscles on the animal is not necessary but it will help um, expedite the breakdown process. Uh, the, the leather on the carcass is quite tough and so using a sharp knife is going to make your job a lot easier. The rumen is in the back of the this area um, sort of just beneath the rib cage and we can just start working our way in there. Until we Once the rumen has been opened on the animal and any incisions that you care to make have been made, we're going to start covering the animal. In order to sufficiently absorb the moisture in the animal, we're going to put some more dry matter on top of the animal, followed by a relatively thick layer of wood chips, at which point, if you only have wood chips on hand, you could complete the pile with wood chips. You're going to want at least 24 inches between the top of the animal and the top of the remaining pile. If you have on hand additional materials like active compost, a heavily bedded horse manure, or a heavily bedded heifer or calf manure, those materials can get layered within the wood chip. We don't want to add more moisture to the scenario, but inoculating the pile with some hot compost will expedite the composting process. In a scenario where you have multiple livestock mortalities to handle, you might want to consider constructing the piles in a windrow. A windrow is basically a long row, 8 to 12 feet at the base in width, and anywhere from, depending on how we're handling things, 5 to 7 feet at the height. The windrow achieves good aeration for the pile while also consolidating the amount of space that is required for managing more than one animal at a time. Now that the pile is complete, we've got about 12 yards of material in there for the cow. This is a full-grown Holstein cow. Um, for calves or smaller animals, much less material would be required. But the substantial pile of this size will eventually reduce its volume and will be about half of this size. Um, and in about three to four months, we'll be able to break into here and pull out uh, the contents, which can be, will be stacked freely in a pile uh, to finish com composting. Uh, this bin here had a Holstein incorporated about six months ago in there. And if we dig in there, there we, we've already found, we've already dug in there, that, that uh, there is basically only the pelvis and the skull remaining. Um, and as you can see, it's about half the size as to the pile when it first started. After the initial three to four months of the composting process, most of the small bones as well as all of the soft tissues will have decomposed. The remaining large bones can be left into the, in the pile and will continue to compost over time. Although after even a full composting cycle, many of these bones will remain. This is the product of the composting process. This finished compost has been produced with dairy manure, horse manure, goat manure, hay, wood chips, paper, uh, whatever we have on hand. All of our finished piles will get blended together into this 
to this pile that will sell off of the site to landscapers, farmers, and gardeners in the area. The finished compost product should be friable, should smell of earth, should be dark, and have a small particle size. Often finished mortality piles will have a high wood chip content because the wood chip doesn't break down quite as readily. That product can be reintegrated into the compost process. Thank you.